What is going on guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with some more news, join us now as we look at the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including everybody hated Ronda Rousey, is Camille headed to AEW, rumored heat between The Undertaker and CM Punk, what WWE actually thought of the draft, and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new videos on WrestleMania XL. And now let's see the intro and get straight into our first story. Our first story looks at everybody hated Ronda Rousey. At top of today's news are comments from former WWE announcer Jimmy Smith concerning what he claims was a general hatred for Ronda Rousey in both WWE and the UFC. I've never been a religious person. One of the things I've always said about God, he gets all the credit, none of the blame. That's what Ronda Rousey wants. All the credit, none of the blame. I want credit for all my wins, my losses. I had CTE and all this and all that. I'm the greatest to ever do it. But when it didn't work, it was so and so and so and so and never me. She never gives credit to the people who actually beat her. The idea that I left MMA and went to WWE because I had a concussion problem makes no sense. But Ringside News also summarized some of Smith's other comments made on Sirius XM's Behind the Cage. Smith claimed that many backstage personnel in WWE and UFC had a negative view of Rousey. He revealed that these individuals took pleasure in her consecutive losses to Holly Holm and Amanda Nunes, suggesting that they were rooting against her due to her attitude and behavior. Smith, a former MMA fighter turned broadcaster, added that he normally doesn't discuss backstage matters. However, it appears he felt Rousey's comments needed to be addressed, and according to Smith via Ringside News, Rousey had a tendency to push around or talk down to those staff members, creating an environment of distaste among those who worked with her. What do you guys think of everybody hating Ronda Rousey? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up is Camille headed to AEW. There's been plenty of free agent signings in 2024 and now it appears former NWA Women's Champion Camille is headed to AEW. A 5 4 select has reported that Camille has signed with AEW and has been under contract since February. The former NWA Women's Champion who held the title for over 800 days had spoken with the WWE about coming to work for the company. There was speculation about whether the 31 year old grappler would have to begin on NXT if she signed with WWE. That's apparently a moot point. Khan recently appeared on Z100 with Josh Martinez and had this to say about Camille. I think Camille is a great wrestler. We followed her very closely. She's worked with a lot of top AEW talent. As for her status, I can't comment to that, but I think she's a tremendous talent and would be an asset to any wrestling company for sure, including AEW. Tony likely wants to keep Camille signing a big surprise, especially if he's working to make sure that she has a strong debut and equally strong program. AEW has expanded its women's roster with recent signings such as Mercedes Monet and Diana Perazzo, and Camille should be another fantastic acquisition. AEW seems to be working hard to improve its women's division, and this steady influx of talent could help it become a respectable part of the promotion as fans look forward to women's matches, much like many fans in the WWE do with its female talent. Next up, The Undertaker talks rumored heat with CM Punk. A CM Punk can be a polarizing figure at times, so what happened when The Undertaker had to discuss wrestling protocol with a straight-edge superstar, and did this lead to some heat between the two? During a Q&A session, The Undertaker recently discussed the rumored heat he had with Punk, explaining there was only an instance he could recall where things might have been tense. The Phenom noted how interactions are often blown out of proportion before he detailed what happened. So we had an initiative at one point where they wanted us, the wrestlers, when traveling to dress a little bit nicer. They wanted us in business casual with a really relaxed viewpoint on the casual. I think we might have been in Europe. I'm not sure where we were at. I wanted to say we were somewhere in Europe and I was getting off the bus and getting ready to go to the arena. And I just stopped him because he was, you know, he was dressing like Punk did back in the day, whatever it was. You may recall the WWE's dress policy from several years back and as taken notes, I was like, hey man, none of us like having to dress like this, but I think you're getting a little bit of heat with the boys. You just might want to think about dressing a little better. If I recall correctly, he says, well, what about Cena? I may have replied, you're not Cena. There's nothing wrong with that. Tager and Punk had a big match at WrestleMania 29, but apparently Punk was expecting more, at least according to Taker. I guess you know he thought he should have been the main event when we worked at WrestleMania against somebody else, not against me. And when he works with me, I'm not sure if he thought that he should have went over, but I mean he's got confidence in himself, so I don't, working wise, I mean perfect and that's all I care about. At the end of the day, you don't have to like me, you don't have to be best friends, but somehow or another, it got all blown out of proportion that like, Undertaker hates CM Punk. No, I don't. I try not to give people the power of hate. Taker is a highly respected figure in the wrestling world for years. 
He also informally dealt with problems between wrestlers. What do you guys think of how Taker handled things with Punk? Do you think there was any heat between either superstar or was this a case of a mountain out of a molehill? Next up, did the WWE Draft disappoint The Undertaker? The 2024 WWE Draft turned out to be a mixed bag for fans as a consensus seems to be that Night 1 was a complete dud while Night 2 was somewhat of an improvement. The biggest complaint is that there were no major moves between any of the brands and the draft seemed to be more about keeping stars than drafting top stars. Now Taker is sharing his thoughts on this year's draft saying, You know what it missed for me? I wanted to see some deals made right. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of teams, they want a quarterback, they trade up or they trade down. The WWE limited some major moves by restricting champions from being drafted. The surprise announcement that Roman Reigns had withdrawn from the draft was puzzling as there was no significant explanation made about how he could do this or what it meant. There was also the puzzling situation where the women's tag team champions were drafted despite the men's tag team champions being exempt. Calling the draft a muddled mess might be an understatement for fans. But Taker continued on saying, you know, that would to be me more compelling to watch. You're expecting your fan base to watch two nights of TV content. And I mean, to be completely honest, there wasn't a whole lot of change really. Sometimes long running episodic shows focus more on the illusion of change, but the WWE draft failed to pull that off too. What do you think about the draft and is there a way to actually improve it? Next up, is there hope for the draft? While there was a disappointment with the draft, there may be hope according to WrestleVotes. As he tweeted, Sources indicate that WWE is generally pleased with the draft results and how everything played out on TV. I've been told that they don't want to do too much high level shuffling as it was satisfied with the pre-draft breakdowns at the top of the card. It's worth mentioning that a trade or two is expected before Monday's roster locking deadline. Now it doesn't make sense for the WWE to carry out a trade off camera when the purpose of the draft was to mark it as an important event. Is the WWE doing damage control with the rumored move? Next up, a new championship coming to NXT. Now, there's a new title coming to NXT and with that also comes a question of whether Raw or SmackDown will follow the black and gold brand's lead. NXT General Manager Ava announced on the 30th April NXT that there will be a 12 women tournament to crown the inaugural NXT North American Women's Championship. WrestleTalk reported, the 12 stars that impressed the most will advance to 6 qualifying matches to determine who will ultimately face off in a ladder match at NXT Battleground to determine the first women's North American champion. This new title reopens the discussion about whether the main roster needs a secondary title for the women's division. There have been repeated calls for the women's intercontinental and United States championship to give the women's undercard another belt to contend for. This makes sense as the WWE has a solid lineup of main event women, but its women's undercard is often underutilized except in minor feuds. A secondary title could help the female superstars develop their skills and get over with the fans, with the ultimate goal of elevating some to the main event. Such a title could help the WWE test its female superstars to see who is ready for further push without throwing them into the main event when they aren't ready. Do you think WWE should add a secondary women's championship on Raw and SmackDown? Let us know in the comments down below. And finally, an NXT superstar set to leave in June. And last but not least, it appears NXT superstar Scripps is leaving the WWE in June, at least according to a report from Fightful Select Sean Ross Sapp. Fightful Select has learned that Scripps, formerly known as Reggie, contract is set to expire at the start of June. He's been informed that the deal will be expiring and he'll be a free agent. Fightful Sean Ross Sapp has learned that Scripps, who will likely go by Sydney Akeem, plans to continue wrestling and expected his deal to not be renewed. But Scripps is a talented and charismatic worker who caught many fans by surprise when he went from playing a background role as Carmela Samelia, Reggie into an in-ring performer capable of some incredible acrobatic moves, and then he took on the Scripps character when he went to NXT, but despite an initial push, he never seemed to get any direction. But there you have it folks, the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know. Be sure to leave your comments down below and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.